Hi guys, Claudia Boleyn here. Uh, the reason I'm not on screen right now is that um, it's, well, <laughs> I'm just sitting here in my dressing gown basically. Um, yesterday I went on quite a rant about biphobia in stuff, um, triggered by an Emmerdale storyline which I've been talking about a lot. So the head uh, writer or producer, executive producer of Emmerdale, Ian MacLeod, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong but I've not had to say his name before, so basically he was at like an LGBT event the other day and I've spoken quite a lot about how in Emmerdale there's one canonically bisexual character and the choice was made by this man who is in charge of Emmerdale to have this character <laughs> cheat on his husband three weeks after marriage thus enforcing every bad bisexual stereotype ever um, genuinely what this character's done is he probably ticks every single box of the most like devious bisexual ever. If it wasn't so bad in terms of representation it would actually be funny, <laughs> it would actually be amusing. Um, but yeah, so here's the article that's come out about this. There were some questionable things being said yesterday and again I went on a, a Twitter rant which I'll probably show you in a bit. But okay, so I'm going to read you this article from Digital Spy, which I love. Hello, Digital Spy. Emmerdale boss Ian McLeod responds to bisexual cheating backlash over Robert Sugden. Sometimes you can overlook the sensitivity around certain areas. And here we have a photograph of <laughs> two of my favourite Emmerdale characters in one of the worst situations um, I have seen on Emmerdale. Like, people hate on Rebecca for her part in this. It's not her fault. She was written into this bad storyline, and it's not fair on her either. And I love her. I think she's great. Anyway, let's go past that disturbing picture. Emmerdale producer Ian McLeod has spoken out to address the backlash surrounding the show's depiction of Robert Sugden's bisexuality. Some fans accused the ITV soap of promoting stereotypes when Robert cheated on his husband Aaron Dingle with his old flame Rebecca White earlier this year. Some fans. Some fans. <laughs> Many fans. Many fans. Okay. While the shock scenes were already devastating enough for Emmerdale's loyal army of Rob Rom fans, some viewers suggested the show was perpetuating the offensive myth that bisexual people can't stay faithful. Speaking at the Royal Television Society panel, LGBTQ in soap, job done. Oh, <laughs> would you invite Ian to that? Okay. Um, McLeod explained, Robert is a bisexual character and declared himself so relatively recently, it's provoked quite an interesting discussion point in Emmerdale. Yeah, of course it has. He's the first canonically bisexual character in Emmerdale. It's a huge deal. We took the view with the character of Robert that his sexuality was low on the list of things that were most interesting about him. He's devious, manipulative and self-serving and has more than <laughs> has been since birth? <laughs> what? Okay, right. Uh, okay. Um, all right, let's just go with that. Let's not, let's not talk about that. That's a bit odd, isn't it? I don't think babies have traits like that since birth, but anyway, can you just imagine like devious tiny baby bisexual Robert? Okay, anyway, but he recently cheated on his partner and we've got a very angry backlash from certain portions of our audience who feel that we've pandered to this incorrect perception that bisexual people are somehow promiscuous or untrustworthy. McLeod insisted that the show didn't intend to offend anyone, but the feedback has been taken on board and discussed by the Emmerdale team. That's good to know. Okay. He said, it's just a really good example of us as an editorial team forgetting people's sexuality and having this attitude of, we can tell any story we like about anyone. But actually, this has been an interesting exercise in checks and balances. It's forced us to reassess how we do deal with, uh, with characters. And should we consider their sexuality more prominently when telling stories? It's been interesting for us. I still feel like you should reserve the right to have, bisexual to have a bisexual character do something scurrilous if that's consistent with their character. And if it's truthful, but certain portions of our audience haven't agreed. Sometimes you can overlook the sensitivity around certain areas. Emmerdale continues to explore the aftermath of Robert's cheating and tonight's double bill. July the 13th, as his relationship with Aaron reaches breaking point, and I will indeed be watching. So let's talk about this little section here, shall we? <laughs> That's a really good example of us as an editorial team, forgetting people's sexuality and having this attitude of, we can tell any story we like about anyone. I mean, technically, yeah, you can. You can tell any story you like about anyone because you're in charge. But I think that, how do you forget that? I suppose the answer to how can you forget that is privilege, isn't it? Because people who are already represented, they don't realise, do they, obviously Ian is not aware of growing up, what it's like to grow up as a bisexual person, and to basically not know what's wrong with you, wrong with you, I put in. I've, I, if you were looking at me right now, I'd be doing like quotation marks over wrong with you. But you think there's something badly wrong with you. You don't see yourself on screen. It's confusing. All you see are these horrible, horrible, like, stereotypes of untrustworthy people 
Like, the only people on TV you ever see getting with different sorts of genders are never actually called bisexual. It's not treated as valid, it's just treated as greedy. How can you genuinely <laughs> have your first canonical bisexual character? And I, I don't, I'm sorry, but I can't believe it's just ignorance here. Like, how can you do that? Your first ever canonical bisexual character. Your first ever. And then you have them cheat three weeks after marriage. Oh my god. And I know that he says it's in keeping for Robert's personality. And yeah, okay, so let's have a look. What does he say about Robert's personality? Let's go back up to that. So we've got, um... So we've got manipulative and devious and self-serving. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd argue has been since birth. I don't know if babies have these traits, but um, yeah, okay. So he is devious, manipulative and self-serving. That's very true. But there was literally a whole a whole arc, like a whole storyline that took a long, long time, many months, dedicated to Robert coming to terms with his sexuality and dealing with that and dealing with Aaron's like response to that. Aaron is his gay partner. <laughs> And basically, we went through this really empowering time in Emmerdale, which is great. And this is why so many bisexual people are on board with this ship and this show. Where Robert's like, okay, yeah, I'm bisexual, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna cheat. Like, that was, it was so prominent. It was such a huge thing that Robert was like, I may be bisexual, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna cheat on you, okay? But that's fantastic. That's like, yeah, defy those stereotypes. Like, let's do that. And then, for some reason, Emmerdale decides to undo all of that and just make it into another one of, of Robert's lies. Because Robert's a devious, manipulative, self-serving bisexual. And so, obviously, he lied about that. And apparently, bisexuals <laughs> just can't help themselves from cheating. Like, genuinely, just from a character point of view. Like, there is no way, no way that Robert, at this point in his timeline, would have cheated on Aaron. Like, yes, he has been a cheat in the past. And we can have a conversation about whether he was a good choice for their first canonically bisexual character. I still think that they should just... They always forget that there's a character called Debbie Dingle in Emmerdale. And back in the day, her and Jasmine Thomas, who was played by Jenna Coleman, were the first, like, female-female relationship I ever saw. I was a kid, and it was... It was so... It changed everything for me. It was the first instance of women loving women that I ever saw on TV. And that was dealt with badly at the time, but to be fair, it was the past. <laughs> It was the past. Things were different. But any character, they could have chosen any character to do this and they chose, they chose Robert Sugden. They chose him. <laughs> now instead of telling an empowering story about how a character, even a character with the most negative bisexual stereotypes, who plays into every bad stereotype, <laughs> they could have chosen the story where he defies them, where he does find that person he loves, where once he's come out and he's, he's been open about his sexuality, he's able to stay faithful. Like, to be completely honest, like, I don't care if Robert Sugden has a history of being a cheat, okay? That's already in his, in his story. But what is more important? We have to ask ourselves this, okay? Is it more important to well represent an entire community who have never been represented in your show before, or to try and create cheap drama by, like, under the guise of, oh, he's staying in character because he's been devious since birth. I mean, he could still be a devious, manipulative character. You can keep those traits about Robert. You just didn't have to have him cheat after three weeks. After so explicitly having him point out that being bisexual wouldn't make him cheat. Like, I know that those of us who are more into the LGBT stuff and who think about this more deeply and who are part of the LGBT community, we understand that if a bisexual person cheats, it's not because they're bisexual. But we can't look at it like that because Honestly, this is the first thing that so many families, so many people, this will be the first time they are ever really exposed to bisexuality because not many people really understand it. Their first, oh my god, it's scary just thinking about it, their first <laughs> introduction to bisexuality will be Robert Sugden in this storyline. So they've gone through that whole, oh, okay, just because I'm bisexual, I'm not going to cheat. That's fantastic. I want people to see that. Then they've seen him undo that three weeks later. What are people going to think? What are bigoted people going to think? What is this storyline doing to bigoted people and bisexuals? Because it's making bisexuals' lives harder because they're having to fight against these stereotypes which Emmerdale are now reinforcing, even with a character who tried to fight against them to start with. And it's making it easier for bigots to feel validated. Now, I'm lucky because my family are very tolerant and they've become very good about my bisexuality. And they know about these stereotypes and they don't believe them at all. But I remember when I was first coming out, this was really hard because society does have these negative stereotypes. Now think about what this is going to be like. This is what I'd like writers to think about here. What do you think this is like or was like for young bisexual people who watch the show because there is a bisexual character in it and they are drawn to it and they watch it with their families every weekday night at 7pm? How do you think this is for young bisexuals whose families are intolerant of them, who are bigoted, who don't support them? <laughs> How, what do you think that's going to do, having their families watch that storyline? Genuinely think about that. And I want to know, was it worth it? 
was it worth it? Because I can't, I still can't see what the point of the storyline was. If there was some sort of aim to this storyline, like some end goal that made sense, maybe it would be easier to reconcile that in my mind. <laughs> but as a bisexual viewer who loves soap, I want to write for soap, I watch Emmerdale, EastEnders and Corrie religiously, I love my soap so much, but I want to know what the aim was. I would really love to find out why, why they thought this was relevant, because it doesn't even feel like something which is in character for this point in these characters' timeline. I would just, I really want to know the reasoning behind this, and we still haven't got it, and maybe in the future we will understand it, but to be, it just feels like watching it. I should also add here that I'm a feminist, um, I'm a very proud feminist, I'm a bisexual and a soap fan. I care deeply for the LGBT community and the rights of women, and this storyline has been downright offensive to not only bisexual people, but let's talk about, I mean, I'm not going to get into this in detail, but it's thrown Rebecca White's character under the bus. Now, I love Rebecca, but honestly, the way they've written her in some of these episodes has been so damn offensive. And why? What for what? And Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Dingle, who we all know and love, like, why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. So this quote here, actually this has been an interesting exercise in checks and balances. It's forced us to re reassess how do we deal with characters and should we consider their sexuality more prominently when telling stories? I just feel like this comment, it kind of reeks of the whole, oh, LGBT people, they don't want to be treated like everyone else. Like, can't we just tell their stories? Like, the social justice brigade is on our backs. But you have to remember that when you have one canonical bisexual character, that is where so much of your viewership is going to learn about bisexuality. It's going to hurt actual bisexual people. Right, a little bit of a few, like, interesting, maybe not interesting, stories about me and my bisexuality. Every single negative bisexual stereotype and comment made in this show I have had aimed at me in some way. And I think most bisexuals in this society in the UK will probably be able to relate to that. I've had people saying it's a novelty. I've had people who genuinely have been very interested in me finding out that I'm bisexual and then saying they wouldn't date me, they really like me, but they wouldn't date me because they think I'm gonna cheat. People think bisexuals are greedy, they think they're manipulative, they think they're just out for whatever they can get, they think that they cannot stay faithful because they need both. Now, Imadel has, has addressed so much of this and if they had kept Robert as actually faithful and not playing into these stereotypes, it could have worked. But to this day, there are still characters good characters who come out with biphobic things and they are not called out. The narrative almost presents it, almost, especially to people who aren't versed in community stuff, as, well, Robert is a villain and they are indeed right. Because Robert is being presented as a liar, he's being written to do these, these he's being written to be devious and manipulative and lie. So why on earth would anyone take him at his word when he when he tries to like defy bisexual stereotypes. It doesn't make any sense. And again, it doesn't have to be Robert Sugden. Here's the thing, right? Say it's really important to you to have Robert as a cheater in every relationship he's in, regardless of the character development which has happened and the clear differences in his relationships with Aaron and, you know, the arc he's gone through, which I thought meant something, maybe not. But it doesn't, it doesn't have to be Robert. Like, you could have another bisexual character. You could sort this out. The situation could be sorted by making, like, for example, go back to Debbie's bisexuality. Have Debbie say that she's bisexual instantly. Problem solved because you've got two different bisexual characters with different traits. Bigots who are watching the show are forced to acknowledge that we are all different. That means that they are actually forced to see that Robert, for all his negative qualities, does not represent bisexuality. And then there's this quote, it's been interesting for us. I still feel like you should preserve the right to have a bisexual character do something scurrilous if that's consistent with their character and it's truthful. I mean, yes, yes, but you've got to understand. Like, I'm guessing you guys, you, you, you weren't, this storyline wasn't forced upon you, right? You chose this storyline. For some reason, some people sat down and thought, you know what would be really great after a huge storyline about Robert trying to prove that being bisexual won't make him cheat and like trying to <laughs> make sure Aaron knows that and to deal with Aaron's biphobia and Robert's internalized homophobia and his confusion. Like these people sat down in a room and thought, okay, well after all that, let's, let's actually get them married. Let's get them married people. <laughs> and then we'll have the bisexual cheat after three weeks. Someone sat down and did that. That's not just, I mean, sorry, I want to believe that's just naivety, but how is, how can that be? How can that, I just don't even believe it. It's worse than I could ever have imagined. And at the time when these spoilers were coming out, people couldn't believe it. People thought, it can't really be that bad. Surely, surely they're just, they're just like trying to create drama. Like it won't be that bad when it happens, but it is bad, my friends. It's got even worse. I mean, at this point, 
the bisexual guy is is now the, the woman he slept with poor rebecca is having his child i mean forever now whatever happens in this storyline now if that baby is robert's and if the baby makes it which i hope it does i still think that baby is ross's but there we go if that baby does make it and it grows up even if we grow to love that character and they deal with stereotypes and all that stuff there is still going to be a constant reminder like, it's like, I feel like I'm Aaron here. <laughs> it's not the reminder of Robert's betrayal because, the, okay, fair enough. Like, that was written into the story. That's not his fault. I don't blame him for the bad plot lines. <laughs> but it's really, it's a constant reminder of this biphobic storyline and that the writers clearly just did not care about their bisexual viewers. Sometimes you can overlook the sensitivity around certain areas. Oh, God, I just... Please, Ian, Ian, mate. Now, I love Emmerdale, and it's done some amazing things, and I don't want to get at Ian, and I don't... I'm honest, now, I have so much respect for so many of the storylines, like the Ashley Dementia storyline, amazing. The Piers and Rona storyline, absolutely fantastic. Like, some of this stuff has been so groundbreaking and educational and I've learned things about different issues which I, I never knew before. And there's, isn't that the whole aim of soap? Like, so that's why it baffles me so much, because on the one hand you've got this amazing sensitivity shown to these topics. Like, there's so much, like, the Rona's story really shows us not to victim blame, it shows us how it's hard for victims of rape, like female victims of rape when there's a male perpetrator, how people will often blame them, how people turn on them. That's being handled really sensitively and really well, like the Ashley Dementia storyline, that's an educational story. That made me feel so much compassion towards not only people with dementia, but their families and to really understand the struggles that they go through. So I don't understand why in a show which <laughs> really <laughs> is sensitive around certain areas, why they suddenly thought that the bisexual thing wasn't worthy of that. And, and that just bothers me so much. Like, can you imagine if they had done some cheap, like, shocking plot surrounding Ashley's dementia storyline? Can you imagine the uproar? This storyline will go down in soap history. In the future, the history books, the soap history books will not look back on this kindly because we are gonna look back one day when we've come forward in the LGBT community, when it's not just the G in the LGBT which is being well represented, when all of us are. When we look back at this and we look back at media and we look back at soap and how they dealt with this stuff, we are gonna look at this storyline. This is one of the storylines which was groundbreaking. It was one of the first big exposures to bisexuality that lots of audiences are gonna have. We're gonna look back on this and we're gonna be disappointed and we're probably gonna laugh. We're probably gonna take the piss. We're probably gonna look back in about 20 years time and laugh at how horrendously biphobic and awful it was. It's gonna be famous. It's gonna be so famous. People will look back at this biphobic storyline and it will be an absolute joke. So I made a tweet chain yesterday just because I was bubbling over with the biphobia stuff. And again, it's not just Emmerdale which does this. I think when you're a bisexual fan, it's so frustrating because lots of shows do this. I mean, for example, Orange is the New Black, appealing because Piper, the main character, is bisexual, but they treat her bisexuality so badly. It's so invalidated and it's frustrating. But anyway, here is my tweet stream and I'm going to read it to you because it's just relevant here. Okay, so... Ian had the perfect opportunity to say, okay, we screwed up, we'll do better with BiRep. That's all it will take, to be honest. I get so tired of people from privileged groups acting like the representation of minorities isn't important at all. If you are lucky enough to have control of a TV show, you can't then use it to enforce stereotypes about minorities. That's not even ignorance, that's plain nastiness. Ignorance would have been not addressing the bi stuff. Ian chose to have his one bi character cheat after three weeks of marriage, after months of development and talking about how being bi doesn't equal cheating. So many of the viewership are bi or LGBT. That's why Robborn is so popular. So why put those people through this? How do you think it is for us bi people who have intolerant families and having to sit down and watch this storyline together? People will use it to justify their bigotry. People will feel validated. That even though the bi characters said they could be different, essentially they weren't. So many people will only know bisexuality from Emmerdale and they threw us under the bus like this? It would be funny if it wasn't going to harm actual people and impact the real lives of actual bisexuals. If you can identify why Aaron is so successful as a character, because he's not a stereotype and has always had so much nuance, then why is it so hard to see that having Robert play into every negative bisexual stereotype is a bad move? I'm just angry as a bi person because this is the sort of thing people think of us already. Literally, I've had all these stereotypes used against me. Gay people think I will cheat and have told me that. Straight people think I just crave novelty. And Emmerdale is being complicit. Even if it's unintentional, the damage is real. 
please think about it Emmerdale, please. So I guess this is a video, um, it's expressing frustration but it's also, it's reaching out in a way and just saying please, not just to Emmerdale but to all shows, especially soaps because soaps have such power. I don't like it when people are really blasé about soap because it's such a, an amazing genre, it's fantastic, you can have so many different sorts of storylines going on and you can educate so many people with your storylines, you can stop bigotry, like you have the power to improve the world with your soap. I can't tell you the amount of misconceptions which have been destroyed through watching soap for me growing up. Soap is such a powerful tool for change and it worries me that the person in charge, if a person in charge of a soap doesn't understand that power they have, then it does make me think why are they in power of that? I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to aim that particularly at Ian McLeod or McLeod, sorry if I pronounced that wrong again. It's just when people are in charge of these shows that can make such an impact and they choose not only not to use that power, but sometimes they use that power in a negative way that will actively hurt real people. I just wonder how that happens. It is very, very worrying to me as a bisexual person. Again, these sort of stereotypes being reinforced they really genuinely hurt us in actual life because that is what people think of us already. They are having their thoughts validated through the shows they watch with their families. It's really hurting us and I, I just wish that these shows would think about that because not only is it frustrating and poor writing but it's hurting real people and, and why would you use your platform like that? Representation really matters and people who say representation doesn't matter or don't get that Usually they say that because they are already represented. They don't grow up having to prove to people that they are not that stereotype. They are not constantly shut down by these stereotypes. And on a serious note, from a show which deals with, for example, Aaron's story with his sexuality has been excellently done, I think. Um, obviously Aaron also suffers with self-harm and, and he's attempted suicide before. We have to remember the high percentage of LGBT youth which still self-harm and try to commit suicide. The suicide rate and the attempted suicide rate is so high and for a show which has dealt with this so sensitively for a character like Aaron to actively perpetuate these negative stereotypes and make life more difficult for bisexual people which will lead to more self-loathing for bisexuals it's quite appalling. If you have a teenager watching Emmerdale with their parents watching this storyline what do you think that's going to do to them? Re that's what I'm going to leave you with. Please think about those bisexual teenagers. Think about that Think about how that's going to impact their lives, how that's going to validate bigotry, and how that's going to maybe make them bottle things up, not want to come out, why it's going to cause them pain. Please think about the actual real human pain of people in these situations. It's not just about cheap drama, sometimes it's bigger than that. Okay, thank you all for watching. Um, I love you loads. And this is not a, a hate video, I'm not trying to hate on anyone. I absolutely adore Emmerdale. Um, I know it seems like I'm sort of getting at Ian, but honestly I think he's done some really good things with the soap. It's just this issue is close to my heart, I know how it hurts people and I've had lots of people asking me to speak on this so indeed I have, okay? I love you loads and I will see you really soon. Hang on in there bisexuals. <laughs> love you, bye!